Hi, everyone. Welcome to Sure Reviews number nine. What's my motivation here? What's my motivation? I've got this beautiful Velvet Underground vinyl in the background right now. So obviously that's what we're going to talk about, right? Um, not so much. Today we're going to talk about the Black Angels debut album, Passover, which was released on the 11th of April, 2006. This is a full-on psychedelic rock revival. This album is drenched in spring reverb and monotone melodies. Um, the songs are mid-tempo and kind of droney. I haven't analyzed it too deeply, but I don't think it would be too much of a stretch to state that the majority of these songs are all in the same key. Um, they're hypnotic. They're simple and they're hypnotic. They're usually comprised of just a verse riff followed by a pre-chorus riff and then back to the verse again. There are no choruses. You can correct me in the comments below, but I don't think there's anything that could be viewed as a true chorus on this album. And there's nothing wrong with that. So right out of the gate, we have a strong opening track in Young Men Dead. There's lots of lyrical repetition here, setting the stage for the rest of this musical experience. And at times, the message is overtly political. I don't know if the band consider themselves as a political group, but with song titles and lyrics, for example, um, the second song is titled The First Vietnam War. I don't know if they consider themselves a political band, but with titles and lyrics like that, it could certainly be viewed that way. So they're definitely adding to the aura of being a 60s slash 70s type of protest band. Uh, I don't know. Titles and lyrics like this definitely add to the 60s and 70s aura that the band quite successfully attempt to capture. Next, we have Sniper at the Gates of Heaven and The Prodigal Son. These are great songs. They just add to the droney, uh, hypnotic mystique that the band portrays. Moving on, Black Grease and Manipulation. These two songs were not recorded along with the bulk of this album, um, which is not to say that they don't fit in perfectly thematically with the rest of the album. Um, they really do. Uh, and it's not obvious that they were recorded at a different place in time, unless you listen really carefully. Uh, I think that the only audible difference is that the room reverb in these two songs is more tame. It's, it's less, uh, springy. It's more of a room reverb rather than, uh, the spring reverb that they rely on heavily. I think they use electroharmonics, uh, holy grail reverb pedals, spring reverb pedals. And also the drums, uh, are a little darker sounding in black grease and manipulation. Empire comes up next. It's a great song. Uh, better off alone. This song has an awesome breakdown. What's my motivation here? What's my motivation? Uh, I was not going into this with the intent of talking about the Velvet Underground. Uh, the Velvet Underground's legacy speaks for itself. They were an interesting collective. They put out interesting music, um, very forward thinking. And I want to use the word monotonous, but in a positive way. I think monotony in music uh, contributes to kind of a hypnotic feel, a very cohesive feel. 
The Velvet Underground and Nico, produced by Andy Warhol, is amazing. So, Bloodhounds on My Trail is a more upbeat and fun kind of song. It's got slide guitar that leads into uh, the final track on the album, Call to Arms. It's the strongest example of their Velvet Underground influence. So good. Velvet Underground had a, a fiddle player or a violin, depending on your terminology. And they had Nico. This band, the Black Angels, they are so heavily or were heavily influenced by the Velvet Underground that uh, they've kind of co-opted their sound, but not completely. They've kind of taken something and made it their own. And at the same time, um, you know, their their name is taken from a Velvet Underground song. And their logo is actually a black and white picture of Nico, who sang on the Velvet Underground and Nico. Uh, they're not shy about sharing their influence. Uh, and this album, the Velvet Underground and Nico, how many times have I said that? Have I said that five times already? The Velvet Underground and Nico, the Velvet Underground and Nico has been such a, an incredibly influential album since its release. The, uh, the urban myth, maybe it's not a myth, um, is that everybody who picked up this album went on to form a band that became very successful. And then why not? Why not? We've got incredibly creative people here. The Black Angels pass over. It was kind of hard to uh, decide if I was going to speak about this album or their sophomore release, uh, Directions to See a Ghost. I think I got the title right. Um, both of these albums are heavily influenced by the Velvet Underground, the whole psychedelic movement. Uh, they come off, whether intentionally or not, as political statements. Um, and then their third album, Phosphine Dream, which I haven't listened to too much, it... Uh, my my initial impressions were that it's uh, Phosphine Dream is a more of a surf rock album. I need to listen to it more. Uh, if anyone wants to comment on Phosphine Dream, please do. I welcome it. That'd be great. Um, I intend to get the Black Angels Passover on vinyl. I think that it would sound great with the proper preamp and turntable. Uh, so thanks for thanks for tuning in again. Um, this is, as I stated before, episode nine, um, for episode 10, it's kind of a milestone. I might do a tour of my music room. If anybody would like to see that, please leave a comment. Um, or I might just do another review. I'm not sure at this point, everything's been going so well. Uh, and I've noticed that when I write a rather large script, I end up just reading the script. When I kind of dial it back a bit, I just talk about the album and what I think of it. So, thanks for watching. Thumbs up, subscribe, please comment, uh, share this video with your friends. Share this video with your real friends and your Facebook friends. Um, Episode 10 is coming up, and maybe we'll just review the books. All of them. I'm Logan from Sure Reviews. Take care.